Uh, good to see some uh, beautiful names here. And thanks so much, guys, for making time for today's conversation. And also, thanks to the team at um, China Admissions for putting all these together. Uh, today's conversation is, is going to be pretty straightforward, but before then, my name is Anthony. My name is Anthony Kwame. I've been in China for the past um, at least seven years <laughs> uh, and still counting. Uh, basically, I also came here as a student, just as most of you. Uh, I studied in Beijing, Beijing Normal University. And then when I finished school, I decided, well, I was going to start my own company. Uh, prior to that, my experience, my background is being in commercial banking. So I worked at Buckley's Bank briefly, um, also worked at Vodafone, uh, briefly UK, um, and then before going on to do my master's degree. Uh, but of course, during my time, I've been very fascinated about entrepreneurship. And so as soon as I finished my master's degree, I was like, this is it. I was going to give it a try. And it's been a, a very interesting journey. And so probably I've taken most of, most of your, your requirements, international students studying in China, want to handle a career or something. Uh, in 2015, we started a platform called China Internship Placements. That was the first company ever. Um, the emphasis was basically helping international students find internship opportunities in China. Um, and so basically it was, it's currently we've served over 5,000 students over the recent past, worked with like really big universities like University College of London, York University, University of Southern California in helping the students find internships in China. Uh, but then we graduated to something bigger, which is Oriental Career. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I'm also the um, chapter director for Startup Grind. If you guys have heard of Startup Grind before, you look at my background, you see the SG logo, that's Startup Grind. It's the biggest entrepreneurship organization in the entire world. And um, so if any of you have any questions, definitely I'm here to answer anything on career, entrepreneurship, and all that. So let's get started. What we do is with the experience of working with young graduates, university students over the last, I would say, um, five, six years, we decided we're going to build something more inclusive, bigger. So Oriental Korea is software as a service startup, and uh, where we, we're designing a set of digital tools to help young professionals grow, right? Um, and in the process, we have a combination of technology, we have combination of mentorship, training, and advice. Uh, along the way. I would say that job search is now really complex than ever before. And so mentorship is like, like a quick and a fast way uh, to, to, to get in started. And so that's what we're doing now. Um, so basically what I will say is we just started an intersection of people and we like taking on projects like, you know, that relate to entrepreneurship and, and also startups. So we're proudly backed by, okay, I think something is, so we're proudly backed by HopSpot. HopSpot is one of the largest marketing platforms. They have a program called HopSpot for Entrepreneurs. When you heard about these very projects about Oriental Korea, they decided, well, we love your project. We want you to come on board. And so they're providing all our technology needs and have adopted us into HopSpot for Entrepreneurs project. And we hope to leverage it. So this is my team. So right on top here, you would see Elliot. This is Joanna. He ha Elliot handles um, the British markets and some of the European uh, countries. And this is Joanna, my co-founder here in China, myself. Uh, we have um, Della. We have Maureen, who is in charge of our content. Um, we have Yuya. She's in charge of Southern China. And also Monica, who pretty much deals with operations. Good. So our numbers, basically, um, so far, I think we have over, um, Oriental Korea has, I think, close to about 80,000 users, um, which is split into different parts, some are in China, Singapore, Korea, Japan, and also um, Europe. All right, some of the universities we currently partner with, um, and now we're driving, we're paying a lot of emphasis or putting a lot of emphasis on, on the Chinese market. And so you will soon be hearing about us partnering with different institutions and universities to bring you career development programs. Great, so I won't waste too much time. These are some of the 
companies we've partnered with in the past. Now the list is even bigger than ever. Uh, so far, we have close to about 2,000 companies that use our platform for different things, uh, recruitment and their programs. Now, what can you do on Oriental Career? You can create a profile and then we do the talking for you. So we've made it easier for you to just fill in certain parts, just like the resume. And then we expose your profile to different organizations. Um, we also allow companies to interact with profiles and then reach out directly to the students. Um, you know, we also allow you to design your own resume on the platform. Um, the coaching support is coming up. We rolled it out briefly and took it back because we want to onboard a lot of coaches. Um, so we're doing the onboarding process. I'm sure by mid of December, the um, coaching program should be rolled out again or even earlier than that. You could also apply for jobs and track it. So basically what most students face is that they apply for a lot of companies and then they're like, they forget, when do I follow who, what do I do next? And all that process is automated on our platform. Um, and then you get a, a little bit of help from our team. And most important thing we're working on now is how we're able to leverage data um, to help the career development process. For example, you're applying for a job, right? Um, what is the percentage of success like, you know, the skill sets you have, how does that match with the high performance stuff in the company you are applying to? All these insights and data helps you position yourself properly. What is the percentage of success in the organization? What's the culture? What's the recent news about the organization? All these things are digital tools we're working on to, build, to bring onto the, the platform. So when you register, this is how the dashboard looks pretty clean and self-explanatory and a lot more features will be rolled out um, in the coming days. So yeah, that's just a little bit about um, Oriental Career I wanna share with you. So we can begin with you know, the Q&A session uh, with uh, Zafir. So Zafir, I'll stop sharing my screen and then we roll into the Q&A session. Hi, thanks, Anthony, for introducing his platform. I hope you guys are um, a little bit interested, at least. So um, here we prepare some questions first we have with Anthony. So here, actually, um, from our platform, the China Missions, most of them are international students, has already started their study in China or wishing to come to China to start start their life in China with study first. So how international students could make the best of their studies in China. All right. So I think that um, before you want to jump into China and study, or if you're already in China, the first thing you need to do is you need a plan. Okay. You need a plan. And you just don't jump in without any expectations. All right. Um, and um, the way you can work around it is that's why I admire what. Um, China admissions is building now. Um, they're creating a community where you could interact with previous, you know, alumni who have studied in China before, working in China, or who are planning to come in China, and ask questions about how it is, and then try putting a plan down for anything, whether it's entrepreneurship or having a career in China. Two, when you arrive in China, finally. It doesn't matter which university you are. Try as much as you can to break your um, expat bubble or kind of like the student bubble. Because most of the times when we come to China, we are stuck with each other, right? It's kind of like we're in the dormitories, we're in classrooms and just places that foreigners are. Try as much as you can to make friends with Chinese because the journey is going to be really interesting. And for you to get the best out of it, you need to have some very good friends who can share insights with you. Third, don't forget to learn the language. You might be studying in English, which is perfect. That's there's no problem with that. But if you have the chance, try and improve your Chinese language skills because you would need it. Whether you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be a student um, or work, these skills come in really handy. Um, I would say that if you speak some amount of Chinese, your chances or exposure would be greater than someone who doesn't do that at all. I would also say 
while you're studying with the universities in China, try and explore other opportunities outside of China. So for example, most students say they come to China, they can find internships, and then they're stuck there. Um, there are opportunities out there. I have done an internship myself in China. It's not easy, it's tough. Just like any other student, even Chinese, they find it really difficult to find internships. So you're not an exception, right? It's just like um, people feel when I put in my resume, I should get response. No, job set doesn't work that way. There are very unique ways to job search process um, and you need to master that as well. Um, so yeah, these are some quick tips I would like to put in there for whether they're already in China or you're looking to come to China. These are very important things you need to think about. Yeah, so um, it's gonna be, um, just to sum up, it's gonna be firstly, you should start like have a plan ahead of time before you start your study in China. It's either to um, find a job or start your own business. It's better to plan ahead. So even if you are just like a student who is just planning to come here, it's gonna be important for you to have a plan, have a time at least in your mind. So secondly, it's gonna be um, have more interactions with Chinese students and uh, China's like other friends like when you are here, like just get into the environment and also just don't limit your expectations. You can try it. Like even though you're studying in China, you can still like look out around the world and from, find more possibilities. Yes, and uh, you are you, like, it's very correct. I'm, I'm a Chinese and I just graduated this year actually. Um, like I'm fine, I'm having like a great like um like obstacle as well as my friend looking for like jobs. Actually, it is like not very easy even if you're a Chinese person. So, um, I so I would like to ask Anthony, is there any essential tips for career development in China? Yeah, um, I would say that there's quite a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> from the process of helping international students find job opportunities in China. Um, I think that it would be very essential that you build yourself from, you know, skills perspective, know what your value is and what you bring in on the table. The fact that you are a foreigner doesn't guarantee you access to internships and job opportunities in China. You're supposed to get into the same labor market and um, find opportunities as you might need. That's the first one. So basically what you need to do is know your value proposition. As an individual, what are you bringing to the table? And as I would always say, if you can't try and rehearse your elevator pitch, we call it. So elevator pitch is just, um, I would say a one minute or a 30 second kind of narrative about yourself who talks about you, your values, what you care about and what you bring to the table. Um, most of the time, when students are in a job search process, beautiful resume, they come to interview and the first question, tell me about yourself and they are stuck. Or you find themselves talking about, and so the basics are very important, um, especially in China. And I would say China is a very good destination for job search because most Chinese companies are going international as well as international companies entering the Chinese market. And so like the need for people with a little bit of exposure is very important. Now, if you're looking for an internship or a job and it's getting difficult, sit back, ask yourself, what skills do I have or what combinations of exposure do I have that others out there do not have, right? And hit this hard in your resume as well as your cover letters, someone is listening. Second, um, you need to network, right? This one is almost like a cliche, like basically if you're looking for a job, you need to, all right? So when you submit jobs, um, let's say you go on a job board or LinkedIn or any other platform and you put in an application, just know that there are thousands of others who are applying for it. And now there is a real, there's a reality that's, that's, that most students are grappling with that. There's something called application tracking system or the ATS. What the ATS does is it's a technology that is empowered to scan your resume, all right? So let's say you're applying for digital marketing 
you're supposed to mention certain keywords if you really have the experience. For example, if you're applying into data marketing, you'll be talking about marketing campaigns, right? What results it brought about. You will be talking about, let's say, social media marketing, inbound marketing. It's a term that is really used in a digital marketing field. Now, if those keywords are not found in your resume, you're doomed. <laughs> and so with all these combinations, it's, it's, it's becoming really tough. So I think networking is the bypass around this. Now, how do you do it? You just master the art of approaching people and learning how to connect genuinely. And one, one of the advantages of, of, of connections or building connections is don't wait till you need your connection. Else you'll be too desperate that people could read into your intentions. So as soon as after this event, if you have not given it an attempt, you should start building your network. You should start talking to people who matters. Getting mentors is very, very important. Um, so what is the role of a mentor? They are not supposed to tell you, um, okay, do A, B, C, D. No, they have been through your career. They know the industry statistics. And so they're able to give you some vital details you might not find on the internet. So having a mentor is equally very, very important. Um, and specifically in China, usually there are very little opportunities available, like job boards are basically in Chinese, and then you have a few platforms that are upcoming with, um, with opportunities. So there again, networking helps. Don't hide, get out of your student bubble, show yourself, help. Volunteer. No, if you can find an internship in China, just start with a volunteering opportunity. Look for communities that want to impact, to make an impact um, in society. Find a nice one. It could be job development, volunteering opportunity, uh, where you get to meet companies, and etc. Now, I helped one student find an internship in China after he searched for about three years. And this is what we did. I asked him to join a job fair as a volunteer. And because the companies are there, it gives him the opportunity to meet the company. Something good came out of that as well. So volunteering opportunities are equally good. It enhances you, your resume. Now, if you cannot find anything in China at all, one thing COVID has brought to bear is remote internships, right? Whilst you're studying in China, if you can't find opportunities, reach out. So when you go to Oriental Career Platform, uh, the first thing you notice is under jobs, we have provided remote opportunities, easy to filter, so you can find all the remote internships in the United States, uh, in Europe, um, Australia, other parts of the world, just apply for them. These international experiences also helps your resume become a bit stronger than your colleagues in here. So let's say you're working with a, a startup company based in California, and you've handled stuff like, if you're an IT guy, or you're into marketing or anything, that experience in China becomes stronger than those who do not have it at all, or maybe who do not have an equally stronger opportunities. So yeah, these are some quick tips I'd like to put in there for career development in China, yeah. Yes, that's like very good, very, very useful tips. And we already have students coming up with their questions already in the question box. Um, okay. Anthony, can you find like um, the question box? I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, uh, so. Uh, the Q &A. Q &A. Yeah, the Q&A box. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, oh, firstly, we have one question with Michelle. Um, he was, uh, she was like um, having a similar like question as you explained. So considering at the moment, we are studying online, like all the studies based online for now, of course. Is it possible to just apply to do an internship as we wait for the borders to be open, putting into the consideration that someone has already like um, pretty much some education background, such as diplomas or bachelors? Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. So the, the, um, I mean, if you have a background, whether you have a diploma or a bachelor degree, you are admitted into a university when you're studying, right? So yes, you can apply for an internship. And the fact that you're taking these in, um, your study online even makes it easier for you to take on remote internships. Um, if you want to wait till the borders are opened, 
usually what's going to happen is everybody's waiting till the borders open, right? And one of the advantages of being proactive is when the storm is there, you act and you act fast. So, so let's say you're outside of China or you're in China, especially those outside of China. I hear a lot of students complaining, when are we coming back to China? When are we coming back to China? But actually, this is the best time for you to start um, nurturing your opportunities, talking to companies. In, I mean, you can intern with companies three months apart. In a year, you could do about three different companies, right? And the ones that you find really interesting, right? You connect with them and try and make a, an impact. So what happens is, soon as the borders open, if they find you to be a very diligent person and you're already coming to China anyway to study and continue your studies, why not? That's a brilliant opportunity for you to start working on something. And mind you, there are very few international students in China now. So companies are, especially I'm recruiting for a lot of companies now uh, who need virtual interns um, from different parts of the world. So you can, let's say you're, you're based in um, Australia, Korea, Japan, Malaysia, or somewhere in Africa. I'm from Ghana. If you're from Ghana, Kenya, um, South Africa, or anywhere, your understanding of your local market is an asset to a Chinese company that has always been looking for someone. So reach out to them, tell them, I'm a South African, I understand the market, and I can help you with some basic marketing on the ground. And watch what the responses are going to be. It's going to be pretty positive. All right. Um, uh, here is another question from uh, Devon. And um, he has some questions uh, regarding um, like interviews. So uh, how would you approach, tell me about yourself, this type of interview question? Yeah. So tell many me tips about on how to like, you don't have to like yeah. introduce yourself right now, of course. Right. Like, any useful tips for especially like um, fresh graduates or people looking for internship? There's always like, you know, the interview people might ask like, tell me about yourself, which is like a very general and hard to address question. Also, you need to be really brief. Do you have any tips about this? Exactly. So tell me about yourself question. It's always about what it is about you that the interviewer does not know, right? If anyone asks you that question, it's a golden opportunity to sell yourself and sell yourself quick. Forget about where you come from, how old you are, um, and other things they can find on your resume. They have that already, and they have read through it before you come into interview. So most of the things I would, I would like to see people talk about when that question comes up is, one, what mm -hmm. skill sets do you possess? I mean, what can you do? What sets you apart? in the job market and what are you passionate about and you know what are you bringing on board that's it that's all that's what companies want to know in the process so you just make sure you hit it hard on that and i think it's supposed to be 30 seconds you should be able to tell someone if that question comes up hey i am blah blah blah, blah. um you know these are my skill sets or given the background you know that i have you know, I'm able to handle so so and so. Previous experiences have positioned me in a proper way, something like that. Yeah. Nice. Like, um, hope everyone can um get some tips from this. So, um, uh, also there's few students asking about um like um major, especially uh, regarding with like medical, like or doctoral, like um jobs or positions, is that available on your platform? <clears throat> um, you mean jobs for? Um, like um, hospitals or like a medical, like um, like 34 student with a medical degree or want to do nursing stuff, something like that. Yeah, so, so basically, um, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we do not have those. And especially uh, medical medical internships, because most of the times that is a, should be a partnership between the university where you're studying oh, yeah, that's the true. hospital, which is in China. Um, probably in other countries, we can find such opportunities, but within China, um, it's slightly difficult. 
I think also for especially medical students mm -hmm. uh, and also, yeah, especially medical students, these are, these are um, some little issues in China. And I would say, so when you, when you register with your university, ask them, um, but it might be a bit difficult to do medical internships virtually, you know? And so, yeah, it's also kind of like some balancing in that. Yeah. Or um, if you are in such an industry, what you can try is probably you could try uh, picking up internships with medical startups, startups in the medical. Uh, and what you're going to learn from there is what are the new technologies that are coming up in your industry, um, you know, and then probably use that experience, buckle it up and then do something extra. Maybe if you end up in China, you find a hospital locally that you want to intend with. Yes, um, also uh, from my experience, if you're like a medical student and admitted to Chinese university already, like um, cause medical and uh, hospital related majors is like special because um, usually the university and the school will manage like your interns and also um, they will have this like special session for you to like um, get opportunities to do like jobs and uh, practice in hospital. So usually if you are learning nursing or MBBS, you don't really have to worry about this, but um, uh, Oriental degree, like Oriental Korea, this platform also have this like coaching um coaching programs right so they can help you to like um have more like build more skills regarding like communicating with people as well as like um just like doing in interviews or like build up your own personal skills so yes i hope that can help a little bit oh yeah so there is um uh, more question coming up um uh, this from Masi. Um, hello, sorry, I stepped in late. It's okay, someone is late, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so what steps should one take to get internship through your platform? And considering that they don't have enough information on internship and jobs in China. Mm. That's, that's the question. Yeah, so what we did is when you get to the job board, um, the job interface, you create an account, you, you create an account because that becomes your marketing channel, right? Um, to showcase your experiences. And we have created a, a session that, that is about your portfolio. Um, and so your portfolio is just an opportunity for you to showcase what you've done before. Mm -hmm. And most companies pay attention to this. Um, you're twice more likely to be successful if you have a little bit of experience in something. Um, so um, build your profile. And I think we have a percentage check on how much progress you're making. So your 80% complete, 90% complete, 100% complete, you do that. Um, and then once you get it up there, you can start searching for job. And so once you've filled in your profile, you don't have to apply again. You know, um, you don't have to fill in your information over and over and over again. Just that same information you're able to use to apply to as many companies as possible. The only thing which I always say is you could customize your cover letter. Let the company know, you know what? I'm not just um, clicking on apply, 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 all right? I really gave this a thought. I really thought about your organization. I really understand what you offer. And I think this is what I really want to do. You show that kind of customized application in your cover letter where you talk about the organizations, your skill set, and what you bring on board. That's it. So once your profile is there, you can go through the job page look for job opportunities that match your expectations and apply. If you're having any difficulty, um, I'll be leaving my WeChat ID here and my email as well. Just reach out to me directly and I'm more than happy to help you uh, because one way we, we, we're also growing is we are taking um, user feedback very seriously. Um, and so for example, if there is a feature students wanna see, we're always happy to hear that. And if, if the numbers are high, we go ahead and build it for you. So yep, yeah, um, that's how you can use the, the China Internship um, Oriental Career Platform, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, Anthony. And thank you, Massey, for your question. Um, yes, um, but, uh, besides like you can ask question in the question box, you can also raise your hand and ask question like come um, and have come have conversation with us so um Hassan do you want do you have any question you want to ask us I saw you raise up your hand 
Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure really. Okay. So, um, there's like a follow up question from Michelle. Uh, would you advise someone to do an internship based on the previous diploma as they get further in their studies? So now maybe after the second year, apply for an internship related with your studies. Um, uh, I don't really understand. So maybe this is like something related to like, um, they are like currently enrolled. So um, they want to get like an internship related to their prevent, like, pre like the studies they're having right now. Is that like recommended? Yeah. Um... Of course, that's that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, um, for the internships, you know, mm -hmm. except the very technical industries like engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, finance, sometimes um, they require that you have a little bit of understanding of how the industry operates. Um, aside from that, um, I would say yes, that is what you're supposed to do. Just just go and submit the application. And start trying if you've had previous studies so people some people have done let's say diploma in business right and now maybe they are studying an engineering course or something and they are like okay can i have an internship experience in my previous studies yes of course if you have the skills and understand and you're passionate about it that's another word passionate because it's easy for people to tell if you're not passionate about something in your application the way you approach your interviews the way you write your emails and how aggressive you become when it comes to um, following up on these applications. So yeah, um, I, I don't think there is any barrier to that. An internship is an internship. You're supposed to get an experience from that. So yes, you can go for it. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, yes, like also according to like uh, me as a Chinese student previously, um, like we can also take up like um, like part time jobs as well as internship during our like you know it's like summer vacation, winter vacation, just to put the stuff we have studied into practice. This is like actually a good thing, and also like virtual internships can be very flexible, and also it's like good for you to like um, get something to do during the pandemic. So thank you, Michelle, for your question. And uh, besides from the job searching part, Anthony here is also. So entrepreneur for a few years already and have your company. So how is your journey as a student to an entrepreneur? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, I think at the very early stage of our conversation, I touched on um, how I came to China and also kind of like my previous experiences before coming to China. But all that doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter at all. You can have whatever experience it is. So I'll talk about being in China. So when I arrived um, in China, I was studying at Beijing Normal University um, in Haidian. Um, and so after my first semester, I was just saying, okay, I want to use the first semesters to understand China. But mind you, the more you stay in China, right, the more years you, you spend in China, the less you understand China. <laughs> so uh, you would never understand the whole pie, you know, you would not understand the whole um, pie. So what happens is you have to do your part as an international, play your part as an international student. So what I did was, first, I started applying for internships. Um, I felt well with a banking background, um, with uh, a Fortune 500 bank, um, you know, with working with Vodafone and my consulting experience. I can learn something massive in China. Ah, and then after a few applications, I noticed, okay, that isn't working. So then I stepped down my expectations a little bit. My, most of the companies, probably their expectation is, this is a guy who has been in China for just six months. Um, won't we have problem working with him, you know, in terms of communication, cultural difference and all that. So I stepped down. So I went to a smaller company, um, which was about... Um, eight people, yep, um, work with them. The advantages of going with a smaller firm was that I was given more opportunities, right? I was allowed to experiment. So after three months of being with a company, my boss was fired. He's a foreigner who was working in the company as well. He was fired. And then the Chinese boss said, can you handle it? I was like, why not? And he said, okay, 
take over as a marketing manager. So this is a company that was making um, about $120,000 a month, right? They were making $120,000 a month. So he tasked me the responsibility. I appreciate that because they believe and trusted that I could handle it and I, I went ahead with it. So fast forward with the experiences of negotiation, working with Chinese people and understanding the little bits and pieces of what it takes um, to work in China, I decided to launch my own company uh, because I found a problem that needed to be fixed. A lot of international students are interested in coming to China, especially in Europe. When you have a China experience, it's easier for you to get a job with international company because these organizations are well interfaced into China now than ever before. So I said, okay, there's a problem I can solve. I'm in China, my co-founder um, and I put together a very simple website. We started reaching out to companies and that's how we started. But then it didn't end there because being an entrepreneur myself wouldn't help. So usually it's very important that you're playing a very critical role in the community, okay? You have to get involved in the community. So let's say community of entrepreneurs, community of students, you know, it's a, it's a way that you can contribute and um, you can be an entrepreneur as an island, right? And so you need to connect with other people, volunteer, serve, you know, and, and, and get known in the community. And that would expose you to loads more people and then give you opportunities as you desire. And yeah, that's, that's what has brought me so far. So I would say community engagement is very essential. Starting small is very important, no matter what experience you're bringing on board. And then the rest will play out as you get involved. Obviously, I was muted. Um, yes, like, as Anthony said, a community and reaching out to people is like very important, but also how ambitious students can create solutions to problems through their entrepreneurship. I believe you also have faced loads of different like difficulties and also obstacles during your process. Um, okay, so, I mean, I would say for a fact that um, our society is punched with a lot of problems, right? And even as you navigate life in China or as you think about certain things, you're encountering a problem. The question you ask yourself is, do you want to just be complaining or do you want to find a solution to it? And this is how we make impact in society. So things that are very difficult for people to solve. I've seen some entrepreneurs in China who have created solutions in technology that helps foreigners communicate. So for example, you're sitting in the classroom or you've gone for an event, you're speaking Chinese, you don't understand it. All you have to do is just scan a QR code, a standby on your phone and listen to the translation in real time as your phone picks the feedback. And that is a real problem. So as we're here in China, one thing we have to be looking for is what are the problems? If you want to go into entrepreneurship, what are the problems people are facing? Secondly, another area that's pretty good is Chinese companies trying to go abroad. So there are a lot of Chinese companies, factories who are manufacturing brilliant products, beautiful products, but they're struggling going abroad. Do you have marketing skills? Do you have access to some markets that you think are really good you could introduce them to? Just start up from there. Um, and I would say that basically when it comes to, um, you know, yeah, I would say when it comes to entrepreneurship, those are some of the important things. So it's either we are part of the problem or we are solving the problem, right? So keep that at the back of your mind. And so as you navigate, if you identify a problem and you can solve it, pull together a team of other international students who are equally as passionate as yourself and build something. If you fail, there is only one outcome. You learn from it. You make good contact and then you move on to your next step, all right? So yeah, that's that's what basically I'll say about that. Yeah, so um, like it's, it, there's always possibilities if you like look for it and also just try to find out solutions you have. Uh, hi, we have some uh, student raising up their hand. Uh, I saw Hassan again. Do you want to say something with us? Uh, yeah, you are hi. Hi, hi Hassan. Hi. It's nice to meet hi, you. Hi, hi. I'm Hassan Alina. I'm from Sultanate of Oman. 
Uh, so, Anthony, I just wanted to ask you a question. Yeah. If you're, I think you've been fast with your career, and I think you planned for your career five years back, right? Yeah. So, if your plan doesn't work, do you usually change your plan or you go stick with that? What do you usually do with that? Great, great, great. Good question. <laughs> so, <laughs> there is there is no one size fits all answer to to this question. Okay. Now the the question you're asking yourself is, at what point do you know that? Okay, it's because maybe I need to pursue this problem a bit more, or give it a time. It's going to play out proper, or it's time to say goodbye to this problem. Okay, so basically what I would say is that um, when I put the, my plans on the table, for example, why I stopped commercial banking, I didn't like it because when you go to office, I was at the back office, I was handling international transfers, and that was just me and the machine, receiving instructions, doing due diligence, and flipping through some regulation. That's not what I wanted, and so quickly, once I identified that's not what I want, I just stopped and decided to work with Vodafone as a business worker before going to commercial banking. So yes, I've made a lot of pivots in my life as well. Um, even, with, even with my entrepreneurial ambitions, sometimes I think this is the way, but then after a while you notice, okay, this is not sufficient. You just take um, a U-turn. But like I say, that's why you need coaches and mentors in life. That's why you would also need um, a community that people you can talk to. Now, sometimes you're on the right path. It's just maybe six months away from success. And then you quit and that's it. But someone could tell you, I think you're doing something right, but keep going at it. And that's how I stick with it. Sometimes I have my own gut feelings, which is not always enough. I like to make decisions by data and what the statistics are telling me. Uh, but when you listen to people, also make sure that you're not just accepting what people are saying. Because anytime, for example, when I wanted to be an entrepreneur in China, there was a lot of negatives that were coming. It's like, hey, China is tough. You can make it. You're just a foreigner. Um, and, but my co-founder was like, I think we can make it. Let's push through and see how, how it goes. Um, and so, yep, that's what I would have to say about your question. So. Thank yeah, you, Anthony. You're welcome. <laughs> that's a really good answer. You're yeah, welcome. thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Asan, as well. Like, anyone have some uh, like question you want to explain or want to talk with us directly? Just feel free to raise up your hand. And all of you guys are talking for minute. And um, yeah, we are not gonna eat you. It's okay. It's like a very free talk. We are all friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, one yeah. question. There's Frida in the comment session. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what she says. So yeah. she was, she said she wanted to study nursing. I'll leave the scholarship aspect for, for you to deal with the fair. Yeah, but the scholarship, um, uh, I would like, you can email us at service China admissions for a detailed answer. Cause right now I don't feel it's like a good interruption cause this is like career session. So I will type the email address. You can email us after this. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat> Uh, one more question I was preparing for you is like, because um, here we have uh, like students from all over the world and wanting to study in China. And Anthony, you must have also other like um, job experience in other countries. So uh, why, uh, what do you think about this question? Why China is an essential destination for young graduates? Or why do you choose China as a study destination? Right. So. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, I, I'll, I'll talk from my point of, my point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. And others might, might have their own insight as well. Um, I think that China is a good destination now. Um, aside from the economics aspect of it, you know, like um, the cost of studying here, um, you know, and a lot of other things. Uh, but I would say that China is a great destination because from my personal perspective, it's a young economy, right? Um, it's a very young economy. Actually, China has not reached its potentials yet. China is yet together. It's still a young economy. And so there are a lot of low-hanging fruits 
when I say low hanging fruits in terms of opportunities for young people. And one thing that fascinates me with China is the fact that there is, I would say, um, people who are just not afraid of taking on opportunities and challenges and risk. And also an environment where you see innovation all the time kind of conditions your mind to think innovatively. So for example, if you are in an environment where um, you don't, you rarely see new technologies, you rarely see, um, you know, new things coming up. You rarely see policies that kind of like um, initiate growth in economies. I think that China is a great place to be because when you come here, one thing you're going to be, you know, um, surprised with is the level of technology and innovations that happen here. It's like you wake up every day and there's something new and people are thinking, how do I do this? If people are going this way, how do I look different? That is where you want to be. So if you want to challenge yourself, um, it's not going to be easy, I would say. Um, don't take me literally, it's not going to be easy, but it's certainly a place to challenge yourself to opportunities as a young person, because that's the essence of being young, right? Um, you want to be challenged, you want to be pushed um, out of your comfort zone to make decisions that benefit your career and life goals as a whole. For those of you found on the Belt and Road Initiative, those of you found in countries that are on the Belt and Road pathway, um, it's, it's, it's just something we can't overemphasize, right? You have to be in China. Basically, it's kind of like the Chinese influence in those countries are very great and the opportunities are there. Having placed a lot of European students, myself, um, into internships in China, I think that I've helped a lot of students. For example, some of our, our clients are now working with top banks, HSBC, Natasex, um, you, know, you know, other banks, top banks in Europe. And here is the feedback we get from them. Anytime they go to an interview, they ask, hmm, you've been to China on an internship. Wow, that is awesome, right? And they're like, really? How long did you spend it? Tell us about. It then gives them the opportunity to kind of like hammer what they learned in China and then have a successful interview. Um, and so, yep. I would lay it on these main points, innovation too, and the fact that China is integrated with a lot of companies and a lot of economies at this point in time, it gives us a lot more chances going forward. Thank you, Anthony. So uh, we have another question from Mercy again. So um, I think this is just for Chinese internship. Is knowing Chinese language a requirement in getting an internship? Hmm. Um, I would say no. <laughs> the reason I said no is myself, I, I, by the time I was applying for my internship, I couldn't speak Chinese at all. Of course, I, those times, the only character I could identify was Beijing. That's the only character I can identify because I was studying Beijing. I even got lost on my first day at work, all because I was finding it difficult <laughs> to read the characters, but that's fine, that's fine. So uh, coming back to the question, um, definitely when you speak some amount of Chinese, the opportunities available for you are more than if you do not speak Chinese at all. But if you don't speak Chinese at all, there are also ways you can pursue your career in China. And like I said, tone down your expectations and start gradually you know, because when you find yourself in a startup or a small size company, you're still going to interact with Chinese. You're going to get clients, you're going to work with people. And those are also places to build up your experience upward. So yeah, that will be my, my answer to that. When you have Chinese, it's good. If you don't have it, that's not a problem. Just push harder. Yes, also, um, uh, like, I feel it's always a good thing to pick up a language. And also, on our website with China Admissions, we have this um, online session um, with BLCU, like Beijing Language and Culture Com like University. Uh, the class is online and it's open for any level of language you have right now. And uh, just, you can just click on this link and book the class if you're interested with Chinese studies and if you start right now. So, 
Yes, thanks for Massive. Thanks for your question. And uh, one last question I have with you is um, about your platform. How Oriental Korea can help students to navigate their career development in China and uh, like the tools you guys created? I believe all, everyone is interested as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so actually I would say um, with the tools, we're just getting started with them. We have created a job board. We are create, currently creating the um, men, mentor and coaching marching platform. Um, there's a lot more to come. There is a resume preparation tool and all that. Um, so basically what you have to do there is um, create a profile. There is a simple guide that takes you through step by step so you don't get lost in the process. And if you've had some previous experiences before, as I said, you can put it in there. Um, so then begin looking for job opportunities, reaching out to companies. Um, very soon, we would also be launching um, courses and programs because in, when it comes to finding jobs, there are other tools that you might look at like LinkedIn, and some really important social media platforms and how you should manage yourself. And so those courses are going to be dealing with um, how to position yourself properly on LinkedIn, how to network with people, finding jobs, and how to find people to introduce you to job opportunities within their organizations. Um, and so those are some of the tools that will be coming. And so it's a community. And so as we go on, we listen to what the users think, the problems they're facing, we fix them, the most important tools, we build it for them, and then we move on from that. And so these are some of the tools, but going into the future, we are looking to integrate um, um, data into the platform, especially as shell intelligence that guides students with insights. And sometimes you apply to companies and you're like, oh man, um, who is this company? What do they do? It's difficult to find the right information. What's the interview success rate? What do they look for? So let's say you're applying to a company in China and or anywhere, um, and then you find out okay, who are those people who just landed job opportunities with the organization? The platform helps you kind of like see and compare your profile and see where you fall short. Sometimes when you post, job descriptions are posted and then you ask yourself, how do I tailor my resume to meet these organization's expectations? Um, all these tools will be rolled out pretty soon. Um, and so, yeah, we get on. So what you can do is just jump on the bandwagon. Let's hear from you problems you're facing, issues you're having, and also reach out to us if you have any problems, we're always happy to help. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, there is another question coming up. Thank you, Matthew, again. So um, regarding in small cities, how can you guys help with international students to get internship there? Like small city, you know, like Beijing and Shanghai, where there's like more companies and more international people. But how about small cities? Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in the smaller cities, um, I would say that you should also not restrict yourself to the city where you're located for opportunities. Indeed, some are smaller second, third tier cities where you're studying. And the good news is also that COVID has taught us business could be done online. So let's say you're in a smaller city, you can find opportunities, but you're in China and the company is just in Shanghai or Beijing, reach out to them anyway. And tell them I'm an international student in China and here are my values, here are my skill sets, and here's how I think I can help your organization or this is what I'm looking to achieve with my internship experience. And so with that background, you could also find internship opportunities in other cities and do it remotely while you are in a smaller city. If you have some money, um, when you're on holidays in summer, um, just rent a small hostel or a little apartment where you can pair it with others or share apartments. For example, in Shanghai, depending on where you live, you could spend about two to 3,000 RMB sharing flats with other, other students or other people in Shanghai. And use your entire summer, move to other cities and have internship experiences. 
So that is if you have a little bit of budget to deal with these kind of situations. If not, the remote opportunities are always there for you, both in China and outside of China. Yes, just don't afraid to reach out and prove yourself and step out of your comfort zone. Even if you were in small cities, there's always like chances you have online. And also like um, you can always, if you're in China, like in the future, like China is a big place. There's like loads of different cities, loads of different like opportunities. Just make use of your time and also just like to just like try what you have and just grab the chance. Thank you so much again for your information. And uh, I think uh, we are almost hitting an end right now. Thank you, Anthony, so much for your time and all your great answers and experience shared. So um, in the chat box, I shared the link. Um, we have on the like um, for China missions, we are trying to make our events and weekly or two weekly um, like a routine. So if you guys have any topics you would like to like um, listen to, we can introduce more like even of, like previous students or other like um, professionals in different fields. Like this time we have a lot of questions regarding with like medical problems. Maybe next time we can introduce some uh, medical student we have in the field. So yeah, like feel free to check in the link and give a comment and leave your ideas so we can make things better. Um, um, yeah, thank you so much for and like for your time again. Thank you, Anthony. And if you have any questions regarding the um, like the career and about Anthony's platform, there's like Anthony's connection and details share in the chat box and also his WeChat and the email address. So um, for the scholarship as well as um, admission or application problem, feel free to email China admissions at servicechinamission.com so we can give you like a very detailed explanation. Sorry, we didn't give uh, the right answer here because it's just like, uh, like a session about Korea. So, oh, Oh, one more question with Hassan. <laughs> like, um, one more question, please. What advice would you give to someone who is trying to become entrepreneur? Oh, this is a good question. Uh, hmm. any, any suggestions you have, please? <laughs> yeah, I think there is a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where do I start from? So <clears throat> if you, the first thing I would say, if you want to become an entrepreneur, um, is start with the community. And there is a lot of entrepreneurial communities like Startup Grind. And basically, when you go into these communities, what you do is you meet people who are on the same journey as yourself. You'll be surprised. When people come to our events, people show up at Startup Grind events, and they're basically fresh people with just ambitions. Some of them don't even have ideas of what they want to do. In the process of interacting with the community, serving the community, being with people, um, they begin to pick up strategies of being a good entrepreneur. And so being part of the community is very, very important. Secondly, um, I would say that if, you, if your ideas are strong enough, give it a try. Anytime you have an idea, don't just don't just on top of your mind, especially you discuss with someone, they're like, oh, this thing won't work. Don't try it. Um, and then you let it go. No, it has to be backed with real facts. Probably, you know, top ideas never come like the aha moments, right? Facebook just started as a campus project to allow students to connect and alumni to communicate. It's a multi-million dollar company now. Um, you can hear the stories of Apple and all that. So that scintillating feeling, you know, that little, little pulses of ideas that come into your mind, um, you should validate it. Do people want it? Is that a problem? Um, would I be successful if I invest into it? And there is something called the lean um, startup management, or we call it uh, lean startup. There is a book written by Eric Rice called the lean startup management approach. Look for that. It allows you to try your idea within a matter of days, right? Um, and verify if it works before you put in 
your effort, your strength and everything. Um, so that's also what I would say, especially in, in the startup world, you have to fail fast, but it doesn't mean um, you take it literally as failing fast, uh, but you have to find the data that is needed for you to progress from there. Um, so that's the advice I would give. And also help other entrepreneurs to be successful and then it becomes easier for you. For example, let's say you want to build an app that does anything. You have a friend who is into startup. Um, go there, help him. He needs marketing, he needs data entry, he needs IT help. Just go and help. Go to um, China Admissions, tell them, hey guys, I think I can help with anything you need. And that's where you learn how to manage a startup or work with any startup of your choice and learn the management process, fundraising process, marketing process, and everything. And then you can jump into it. Um, that's what I'll say. And above all, have good friends. Have good friends who are genuinely interested in promoting you. Yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome, Hassan. <laughs> um, is Zafar with us? Okay, so while she's, um, I don't know if, okay, probably she's back. Uh, okay, while she's, she's trying to figure out her connections and join us, there was for, uh, Frida who was asking about um, how to meet people. And one tool that I found really useful is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very good platform for connecting with people, no matter where they come from, where they are. And I would attribute some of my success to being able to connect with university admission officers, university staff, top entrepreneurs on LinkedIn. But what do you say? Don't just press add, 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 add people just to build your connection. What you need to do is tell people why you're genuinely interested in connecting with them. So I found Hassan on LinkedIn. And my question is, oh, okay, we'll wait for you. <laughs> so if I find Hassan on LinkedIn, let's say Hassan is an IT guy and he's been posting a lot about development in the IT field. So here's how it's gonna go. Hello, Hassan, I found your profile. I found it really interesting and the kind of content you share. I really like what you do. And I just want to follow you, be part of your community and learn from you. And I bet you that would get a response from that person. I connected with somebody from Amazon. I was looking for some information and they're into data structure and data analysis. And I just make a case for why I want to connect. And within a minute, I was linked up and the rest they say is history. So that is a very essential skill to learn connecting with people. And that was from Frida. So yeah, um, she is, okay. She mentioned her internet is having a problem, but she's back. <laughs> Am I back? Um, yeah, I, I'm not really, um, I, I don't know. My connection is like, was a little bit that just start. Yeah, okay. I can hear you guys though. Yes. Um, yeah, LinkedIn can be very useful, like um, both in China and uh, abroad. So it can be a good choice to reach out. And also while in China, um, like especially in universities, there's also like loads of clubs that you can reach out to people. Mm. Like um, there's international student club as well as Chinese student club for jobs, especially um, like just feel free to reach out and um, start a community and talk to people. We will also, China admissions will also try to arrange like more sessions and clubs like this for you guys to like chat with different like people from local to life and also like between students. So like um, after you finish studies in China, you can find a way out. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you for your great experience shared. And um, yeah, like um, if you uh, also you can pay attention to our website if there's like more sessions coming up, we will post it there and also join our group and uh, send things to our email. We will like answer your questions there. So yeah.
um that's gonna be the end of today's session have a good evening and we'll see you guys like next week or next this week thank you anthony <laughs>